on. Well, most of you know that Centers for Spiritual Living has actually been putting out themes Um, for ministers to use if they'd like to in creating their talks. And so the theme actually for this week is moving from fear to freedom. And so how do we move from fear to freedom? How do we move from fear that we aren't going to have enough, that there isn't enough money because the economy is bad or because stocks are down? How do we move from fear that we aren't going to be able to get that job that we really want because unemployment is high or because we are too old and no one's going to hire us from th- for that job? Or how do we move from fear into freedom when maybe we're afraid of terrorist activity and that somehow we are going to be injured or killed in some of that? I think that we begin to move from fear to freedom by recognizing that yes, while those things do happen in the world, that our consciousness is the creative factor in our lives. That our thoughts and our beliefs and our focus and our attitudes are the things that are the cause of what happens to us in our immediate experience. I think we begin by recognizing that there is no power in the darkness that darkness is simply an absence of the light. And we turn the light on and bring the light with us into the world by tuning in to that divine presence, by turning the light on ourselves. I think we begin by recognizing that there is this law of mental equivalence that says yes to what it is that we believe to what it is that we are focused on, what we are thinking about, what we are talking about, and that that gets reflected back to us from our world. That is attracted to us and reflects back to us according to our consciousness. I used to teach a workshop when I was a new practitioner that was all about self-love and self-esteem. And one of the exercises that I did in there was an exercise about applied kinesiology. That's when you hold your arms up and you see if there's resistance or not. Sharon, will you come up and be a model for me for a moment? And so this is how it works. You can turn this way. And so hold both your arms out to your sides and don't let me, let me scoot this over, and don't let me push them down. They're this strong. Okay, now say three times out loud and to yourself, I am a weak and unworthy person. I am a weak and unworthy person. To myself or I'm Out loud, yes, perfect. That's real. Okay, now say, I am a strong and capable person. I am a strong and capable person. Again, three times. I am a strong and capable person. I am a strong and capable person. She's stronger than the first time. Wow. Wow is right. Wow. We live in our consciousness, and that becomes our immediate experience. And just like I said, that law of mental equivalence, we put this energy out, everything is made of energy. We put this energy out according to those beliefs and what does not resonate with that, we literally repel it from us in our lives. We don't accept what doesn't match that energy. So it behooves us to change our thinking if it doesn't support us in what we want in our lives. And so one of the sayings in religious science is that trained thought is more powerful than untrained thought. What that means is knowing that we can choose what we think, knowing that we can choose what we put our attention on is more powerful because then we get to choose because the choices create what's going out in the world, create what's going on in our world, our thinking. It means that we can choose to think positive and life-affirming thoughts because that gets reflected back to us. Or we can think the negative and scary and awful thoughts and then that gets reflected back to us. But that trained thought is more powerful because we get to choose what we're thinking then. And so repetition of that life-affirming thinking using affirmations, what happens over time is it changes our beliefs and it changes our subconscious beliefs and that law is acting on those subconscious thoughts 
all of the time. But it takes repetition of that positive thinking and of affirming the truth for those beliefs to actually change. And so the title of my talk today is One Step Beyond. And I'm talking about taking one step beyond our fear and our concern. I'm talking about moving from the lesser to the greater, moving from fear to freedom, moving from lack to an experience of greater good by aligning our awareness with the truth, the truth with a capital T, like the truth that all that God is is right here where I am, like the truth that the infinite intelligence of the universe is at the center of this also, and that it is acting right now. Aligning our thinking with the truth puts us in a place of power. And I know that every single one of us in our lives, we want to have some control over what's going on in our experience. We want to have some authority over what happens and does not happen to us. We want to have influence over our immediate environment. And we'd like to have influence even on what's going on out there in the world. And guess what? We do. We have tremendous influence over what goes on by our thinking and our attention because our consciousness influences everything. The problem is, though, is when we get stuck in thinking that we have to fix everything that's wrong in our lives and everything that's wrong in the world by getting out there and changing things and manipulating things in this world of effect. Because we can't be everywhere at the same time. We don't have the power or the knowledge or the know-how to fix every single thing that's broken. But we think that we need to do that in a physical way, like perhaps go out and educate everybody about global warming. Or perhaps we think we need to write letters and make phone calls so that we can get the Senate to vote exactly how we think things ought to be. Or we think that maybe there need to be more laws or less laws. Or maybe that there needs to be more regulations or less regulations. Or that there need to be more Democrats or more Republicans. But we think that we have to get out there and make it happen physically. And we can't make everything happen physically. We don't have the energy. We don't have the time. We don't have the know-how. And what happens then when we can't fix everything physically is sometimes we get frustrated. We get depressed. We feel helpless. We feel hopeless. We get into fear. Do you ever do those things? Oh my goodness, I think all of us do those things. And then when we feel hopeless and helpless like that, what happens is then we eat too much or we drink too much or we shop too much or we spend too much time numbing our minds on the computer, whatever it is that we do, so we don't have to feel those feelings of helplessness and hopelessness. My new very favorite quote by Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of this philosophy says, fear is a belief in limitation a denial that the divine is the center and source of all. When we get into fear, we have forgotten that the divine is the center and the source of all. We have forgotten that the divine is right where we are. We have forgotten that that infinite one is right here in this moment and this moment and this moment. We have forgotten that the boundless good of this universe is already ours, that we are heir to the kingdom that is already present and already made. We have forgotten that there is no limitation in God. And God is right here, and God is everywhere. There is no limitation in God. So when we get afraid, when we get frustrated, it is a prayer request from the universe. It is a prayer request from the universe when we get afraid and frustrated. What is it? A prayer request from the universe asking us to know the truth, asking us to be a catalyst for the good to come into this world, asking us to align ourselves once again with the good that God is. It is a request asking us to stop and to know the truth in the midst of this, that God is the only power that there is, that 
infinite intelligence is at hand in this, that good is glad to happen here. That sets a new cause in motion. Our knowing that sets a new cause in motion. And so this reading that Carol read today, I'm going to read to you again my very favorite part of that that I just loved, which says, Jesus realized that there is but one power and one presence, and he knew that we all live in this presence and by this power. He also knew that when he surrendered himself to the presence, that is, when he thought the thoughts of God, the power would automatically respond to him. Therefore, in surrendering himself to the presence of good, he commanded the law of good. When we think the thoughts of God, we reenact that creative cause and bring that good into the universe through us. When we loose our negativity, when we loose our fear, and instead when we affirm and we know the truth, we command the law of good to act here. When we are God-like in our thinking, we align ourselves with the kingdom that has already been made. We enter into that kingdom and then allow it to express itself through us. The infinite, whatever you choose to call it, God, the divine, the one, the creative force, whatever you choose to call it, does not know limitation, does not know disharmony does not know dis-ease or disorder. That presence only knows the fullness of its own being. That's the truth. It only knows the truth. I am infinite. In God, there is no lack. In God, there is no limitation. There is no disorder or disharmony. There is only perfect, absolute intelligence. There is only absolute good. There is only boundless love. There is only harmony and order and peace and joy and love. That's what the presence of the infinite is. All of those energies. And so Ramadan began on Friday night which is a Muslim holiday, the highest holy day, which is actually a month of observance of Ramadan. And what Muslims do during that time is they practice prayer and fasting, and they fast every day from sunrise until sunset. And so what if we fasted from fear and worry for 30 days? Think about that. What if you fasted from fear and worry for 30 days. What if whenever fear came up, because it will come up, what if every time fear came up, instead you told yourself the truth in the midst of that fear, that God is at the center of this? Infinite intelligence is at the center of this, acting now, unfolding now, what if you told yourself the truth that infinite love and infinite good is here now? What if you did affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment or did affirmations when your fear came up instead? Ernest Holmes says, the truth which we announce is superior to the condition we are to change. In such degree as we speak the truth, the Almighty has spoken. When we speak the truth, we become an avenue for the divine to express through and to flow through. It's like a funnel and a bottle. When we speak the truth in our openness, in our recognition of that boundless good, we become like this wide open funnel for that good to flow into and to flow through in our lives. We create that wide open funnel through our thinking, 
through our beliefs, through our focus. Our beliefs create the wide open funnel or a closed bottle. But we are at choice. We just forget that we're at choice. We just forget that our thoughts are the cause in our lives. And so I read a story this week that I'd like to share with you. It says, there's an old legend of the Middle Ages that is very instructive. It seems that a citizen was arrested by one of the barons and shut up in a dungeon in his castle. He was taken down dark stairs, down, 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 by a ferocious looking jailer who carried a great foot long key. The door of a cell was opened and he was thrust into a dark hole. The door shut with a bang and there he was. He lay in that dark dungeon for 20 years. Each day the jailer would come, the big door would be opened with a great creaking and groaning. A pitcher of water and a loaf of bread would be thrust, would be thrust in and the door closed again. Well, after 20 years, the prisoner decided that he could not stand it any longer. He wanted to die, but he could not commit suicide. So he decided that the next day when the jailer came, he would attack him. The jailer then would kill him in self-defense, thus his misery would be at an end. He thought he would examine the door carefully so as to be ready for tomorrow. And going over, he caught the handle and turned it. To his amazement, the door opened. And upon investigation, he found that there was no lock on it and had never been. And that for all those 20 years, he had not been locked in except in belief. At any time in that period, he could have opened the door if only he'd known it. He thought it was locked, but it was not. He groped along the corridor and felt his way upstairs. At the top of the stairs, two soldiers were chatting, and they made no attempt to stop him. He crossed the great yard without attracting attention. There was an armed guard at the drawbridge at the great gate, but they paid no attention to him, and he walked out a free man. He went home unmolested and lived happily ever after. He could have done this any time through those long years since his arrest if he had known enough, but he did not. He was a captive, not of stone and iron, but of false belief. We get hypnotized into thinking that this material world is solid and unchanging unless we physically manipulate it. We hold that false belief that we don't have power to change things. We forget that by aligning ourselves with the truth, we command the law of good in our lives. And so our invitation is to change our thoughts and our beliefs that do not create the life that you want to live, that do not create the world you want to be living in. Our invitation is to change our thoughts that are unlike peace, our thoughts that say there isn't enough or we aren't enough, our thoughts that say God is not the, at the center of this particular thing, and instead perceive that infinite invisible presence that is right there, the presence of peace, the presence of love, the intelligence of the universe that holds the planets in their orbits, that intelligence notice it in your body that heals wounds and broken bones, that digests your food, that intelligence. Remind yourself that intelligence is everywhere in everything. Perceive that one life that is in everything and perceive the love that connects each one of us to each other. The thing that makes us care about humanity and care about people that we don't even know. Ernest Holmes says, the gift of heaven is forever made. The receiving of this gift is an eternal process of forever expanding the finite. That means forever expanding ourselves and our thinking and our understanding. And we expand that finite 
through reading and studying things that remind us of the truth. Those inspired readings where you read and you go, oh, I've forgotten that. But something in us always knows. We expand the finite by meditating, by affirming the truth. And so our invitation for all of us, all of us, myself included, is to expand our consciousness, to become the place that the divine can show up through you, through me, to become the place where the divine can show up in all its beauty, in all its glory, in all its magnificence, in all its wisdom, in all its love refuse to buy into the collective fear. Fast from negative thinking. Fast from fear. Develop a conscious awareness that that intelligence is at the center of this also. Then we will be creating the life that we want to live and creating the world that we want to live in. And so blessings to every single one of you on this path of awakening, on this path of bringing that presence into this world in a most magnificent way and to creating heaven here on earth. Blessings to all of you. And so I invite you to join me in an affirmative prayer right now. And so I take my attention and turn it to the truth, the truth that that infinite presence is right here in this room. Closer than breathing and nearer than hands and feet is the allness of that one, all the peace that I could ever need, all the love that I could ever need, all the joy, all the wisdom is right here within each one of us right here where we are at every single moment of our lives. And so today we tap into that one within us, knowing that we can bring forward peace and love and harmony and order and good everywhere we go simply by allowing it to come into our lives by being like it, by thinking the thoughts of God, by being open to the good, knowing that it is unfolding itself right where we are. And so I know that today we are led and we are guided at every moment in our lives by that presence, that it is here having its way in us and through us in this world. What a magnificent blessing it is to be here on this planet, awake and aware and making a difference wherever we go simply by being who we are simply by having this consciousness of the omnipresence, the everywhere presence of this one, in and through and as everything. And so today we lean into that truth, knowing that there is that within us which always knows this truth. And so today we allow that to bubble to the surface. We allow it to speak to our minds and to our hearts and to remind us when scary things come up, when the world looks threatening. The infinite is at the center of this. The infinite is at the center of me. The infinite is at the center of my life, and I walk in this presence. This is the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. This is the one that is the protector and the revealer, that which guides and leads each of us. And so I give thanks for this awareness. I give thanks for knowing this truth. I give thanks for being able to bring this into the world. And so I release these spoken words unto the law of my very being, which are the law of the universe that says yes. And so we just relax and rest in this, how good it is. And I release this prayer, and I let it be, and so it is.